In Washington, I welcome former UN Ambassador and National Security Advisor John Bolton. Good afternoon. Glad to be with you. Thanks for having me. You worked for Trump and later strongly turned away from him. Why? Well, I came to the conclusion after being his national security advisor for 17 months, I am his longest serving national security advisor, uh, that he really didn't understand the job, wasn't fit to be president. It was a very, very hard conclusion to come to, but uh, uh, that's what I believe. And I think it's uh, going to be a very difficult time ahead in the national security space for the next four years when he's sworn in. Trump is now president-elect, and from January 20th on, he will once again be the most powerful man in the USA. What do you expect he will treat you now? Well, I don't. I don't think he'll treat me very well. But the but the bigger but the bigger picture uh, is how he uh, positions America in the world, and I'm I'm concerned on a number of fronts, not just political and military affairs, but on economic affairs as well, as he has focused so much of his campaign on uh, instituting potentially sweeping tariffs uh, that could have, I think, a significant negative impact uh, on the U.S. economy and, and on the global economy. What do you think? Uh, who needs to be afraid now? Well, I think uh, if you take Trump's rhetoric uh, in the campaign at face value, he has said he would put 10%, 20% tariffs on all imports into the United States. So not targeted tariffs against China uh, or tariffs that are narrowly uh, tailored to uh, national security issues, but just an across the board tariff. And I think uh, people know from history what happened when the U.S. put the Smoot-Hawley tariffs uh, in uh, at the time of the Great Depression, uh, had, a, had a disastrous economic impact. And Uh, we'll see what the exact scope of the tariffs that Trump is proposing are, but they could come very quickly. There's uh, an, a priority for him to get his 2017 tax cuts extended, and there's talk in, in Congress that uh, that would be uh, coupled with the increase in tariffs Trump has been talking about, meaning perhaps as early as March. So it could come very quickly. Will he take revenge, as many fear? Yes, I, I think he will. And I think he has said he wants retribution against his political enemies uh, domestically and, and internationally as well. Uh, we'll see who he appoints as attorney general. His early appointments so far, there are not very many, but I think the common theme among them uh, is, is that uh, these are people who would uh, do what Trump wants. It's not really a question of loyalty. I don't think that's the right word. I think the word that Trump wants from his subordinates is fealty in the medieval feudal sense of the word. And I think that's very dangerous for him, very dangerous for the country. Let's talk about his re-election. Were you surprised by Donald Trump's clear victory? Well, ultimately, the answer is no. The, the Biden-Harris administration was very unpopular. People were quite concerned about inflation was brought on by excessive spending during the Biden administration. It was a fiscal, not a monetary inflation. Uh, but people were concerned. Uh, Amer look, America is fundamentally a center-right country. And they looked at Harris as the, as the ultimate candidate uh, and thought that she was, in Gene Kirkpatrick's immortal phrase, a San Francisco Democrat, a, a person on the left side of the country's spectrum. And that's not what they want. Uh, they wanted uh, better economic policies. They didn't want the left's identity politics. Uh, and, and they gave not just Trump, but Republicans uh, victory control of the Senate, very likely keeping control of the House. Uh, so it's a significant defeat for the Democratic Party. I don't read it as a mandate for Trump the way he reads it. I read it as a rejection of, of the Democrats. Trump is a convicted offender. Is he also a fascist? No, you know, I think uh, to be a fascist, you have to have a political philosophy. And I don't think Trump does philosophy. I think he uh, he's a person who uh, sees everything through the prism, how this benefits Donald Trump. He doesn't understand uh, constitutional or other restraints. 
Uh, and I think it's going to be a battle over the next four years to try and restrain him. But I don't think he's an existential threat to the United States. The Constitution is strong. The institutions are strong. People didn't vote for what Trump thinks uh, he deserves. And uh, while I do think it will be a continuing battle, I have faith that the uh, the ultimate outcome is is not going to be anything near what some people uh, are predicting. In fact, I think overstating the Trump threat uh, actually worked in his favor. We've heard some names today. What do you think? What will be Trump's administration's first steps? I think the the priority that uh, perhaps won him the election in 2016 and won it for him again in 2020 was stopping illegal immigration. Uh, I think uh, he stumbled badly when he tried to do that in early 2017. I suspect eight years later, he's learned the lessons or his advisors have learned the lessons. I think that'll be the first big initiative. But I think uh, in the domestic sphere, the the uh, institutionalizing the 2017 tax cuts and, and the move to tariffs uh, will be the early priorities. I think he also wants the war in Ukraine to go away. He wants the war in the Middle East to go away uh, because he just doesn't want to have to worry about them. But what it says is he doesn't care how they go away. He doesn't care what the outcome is. He just wants them off the table. I think that's potentially very bad for Ukraine. Uh, and I don't know what effect it will have in the Middle East. Finally, let's talk about Germany. How much does Germany have to fear Trump? Well, I don't think it's a question of fear. Uh, I think it would be helpful when Germany gets a new government, depending on the outcome of your elections. Uh, but I do think that it is a serious uh, threat that uh, Trump might withdraw from NATO. I know a lot of people say, no, no, he's just bargaining over the size of defense expenditures. Uh, I, I think it's a real problem. Uh, I think the trade disputes could be intense with the European Union as a whole. Uh, and uh, I think it's uh, uh, it'll be responsibility for those of us in the U.S. who think withdrawing from NATO is a bad idea, think that a trade war is a bad idea to do what we can to restrain Trump. And I think it's uh, hopefully a question of muddling through the next four years and hope we don't see an increase in the threat from what I think does uh, pose a common danger to the U.S. and Europe, and that's the China-Russia axis. I don't think people should lose sight of that. And if you need proof of what the potential China-Russia axis shows, it's embodied in the 10,000 North Korean troops uh, now fighting uh, against Ukraine. John Bolton, thank you very much for this interview and your warnings. Well, thanks for having me.